So what we have here is the outline for chapter 3.6. We're going to talk about rational functions today. So the type of rational functions we're going to talk about is just a function divided by another function. And so their um, definition here is r of x. So they use r of x for a rational function. And it's just a p of x function divided by q of x. Um, and you're going to assume that p of x and q of x have no factor in common. Because if they had factors in common, of course, we want to get rid of those factors. We're going to deal with that later on. You'll see that it basically will affect the graph in a slightly different way than what we're going to do today. But it is doable. And so there's a couple things we need to talk about. Not only that fact that we're going to divide um, polynomials by another polynomial, we're also going to have to talk about what's an asymptote. An asymptote, guys, is a line or a curve of a graph that the graph will approach but will never touch. There's always exceptions to the rules. I understand this. You guys will see that in a couple cases as well. But for the most of the time, you'll never cross or touch the asymptote. Okay? Now, when I like to say that, I like to say sometimes at the end behavior. Basically, the asymptotes can allow us to figure out what's going on at the ends of the graphs as well. Um, remember that we have such thing as a vertical asymptote, and the vertical asymptotes are here. Whoops, wrong marker. I'll change the colors here. Um, the graph is undefined. It means it has a vertical asymptote. It's when the denominator equals zero. The bottom equals zero because you can't divide by zero, so therefore you have a vertical line there. And it says that a rational function has at most one horizontal <coughs> asymptote or oblique asymptote, so a slant, and possibly many, many, many vertical asymptotes. And we're going to go through why certain things are happening. So you're basically always going to have some type of horizontal or oblique asymptote. And you might have none or a whole bunch of vertical asymptotes. Basically, is the bottom ever going to equal zero? There's a vertical asymptote. If it's a 10-degree polynomial, therefore, there could be 10 opportunities where the bottom will equal zero. You could have 10 vertical asymptotes. Okay. So there's many times that this thing could happen, okay? Now, you have to understand for this whole reason why we, bless you, why we have asymptotes or why certain things are happening, you need to understand that if I have a fixed number, it doesn't even have to be one, that if I have a fixed number and divide it by something that's really, really large, the result is a very small number. Makes sense, right? Going the other way, that if I take a fixed number, and it doesn't matter what it is, say it's 1, and I divide it by a really small number, then I will end up with a very large number. 1 divided by 10 versus 1 divided by 1,000, 1 divided by a million, the number keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller. But if I go the other direction, start dividing by smaller and smaller numbers, the number gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It's intuitive. We've been doing that. You've been playing with numbers since probably kindergarten. So, boom, now you have it. Okay? Put it together. So, what's the first thing we're going to do? It's a little bit on the smaller side. Um, let me see if I can make this a little bit larger for you. I want to just graph 1 over x. So, f of x equals 1 divided by x. I want to do this both by hand and a Desmos. Desmos, real quick, boom, you have an answer. There it is. Why? But that's why we're going to do this by hand as well. This is something we have not seen before, or more than likely. So if I'm anything, I'm going to revert back to a table. So let's make a table for this. So if I go to make a table, you should be looking at this, saying... There's something I cannot put in this thing. What would that be? Zero. zero. You can't put zero. So if I put x equals zero in there, I'll end up dividing by zero. That's what we call a vertical asymptote. 
So that means this graph has a vertical asymptote at zero. So when I go to graph it, vertical asymptotes you should put as dotted lines. This will help signify or kind of say, hey, I can't be here. Can you be point zero 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 one? Yes. Just like you can be on the negative side of that. So you can be right up to the line, but you just cannot be at zero. So, knowing that that seems to be the only thing that I can tell from this graph, I'm going to build around it. So that means I'm going to put values like negative 1 and negative 2 in there. I'm going to put values like 1 and 2 in. So I'm putting values around that asymptote. This is how you're going to build all of the rest of your t-charts as well. Notice that I skipped right over my zero, so I'm not using my fab 5 here. It looks really close to it. But if I put negative 1 in for x, what results? Negative 1. If I put negative 2 in, it's a negative 1 half. If I put 1 in, I get 1. If I put in 2, I get 1 half. Well, that's kind of convenient. It's kind of nice. Will it always happen that way? No. You get the same numbers but opposite signs. So let's start to graph them. Negative 1, negative 1 is there, and negative 2, negative 1 half. Everybody's okay with this? Okay, so now if I go to the other side and go 1, 1, bless you, and 2, 1 half, it's here. Well, that's a can anybody even kind of picture what's going on here? It's kind of interesting. Now, first of all, we got that vertical asymptote going smack down, down the middle here. You can't touch or cross this. So it almost seems like these points here, that if I started at this point, I have to connect, but it almost seems like I should be going that way, right? It's going straight through. Well, here's the thing. I can't go straight through. I have to curve along it. So, it's going to look like this. It's going to start curving towards or up towards infinity. Same thing kind of happens on the other side, as you can see, because it's going downwards, but yet it's going to start hitting that wall. So instead of hitting the wall, we're going to curve and take a gentle approach along the wall. Now, what the heck is going on over here? On the last slide... I said every one of these graphs will have at least one, at most one, so it's going to have one horizontal asymptote. Well, later on you're going to see that there's three cases for this. In this case right here, the bottom is bigger than top. X is bigger than a constant. So therefore, Y equals zero is another asymptote. And when we put this on Desmos, you're going to see that it's also going to approach zero. So, when I take this graph, I am also going to approach the x-axis on both sides. That is the most simplistic rational function that we will have. And we will actually use this, using parent, family, <coughs> child, to graph them when they're in this form. So it's kind of nice. That is a very simple rational function. Remember the shape. Notice that they're opposite corners. There's going to be variations on this, like taking absolute values, which makes everything positive, stuff like that. So I'm going to pause the video. We'll go to Desmos here quick and put this in to see what it looks like on Desmos. So why did I show you y equals 1 over x? Is because, yes, we can use our parent, family, child on this. A rational function has the form of, again, that's a little bit smaller. Um, let me pause to see if I can make it a little bit larger for you. So it's a rational function in the form of ax plus b over cx plus d. It says it can be graphed by shifting, stretching, or reflecting the graph of 
f of x equals 1 over x, the simple rational function we just had, using the transformations from 2.5, a.k.a. the parent, family, child, because I can see that I can make it look like this form. A, B, H, and K all come back. A is your amplitude. H is your left, right. K is your up, down. B is your horizontal stretch or shrink. A is also your vertical stretch or shrink. You remember all of those terminology, all of those things that you guys had to do. So, what I mean is, is that I can now use that idea, parent, family, child, to graph 2 over x minus 3. You just need to recognize what are the certain things. What's A? What's B? What's H? What's, what's K? And if you could take all of those pieces away, we will then be able to create here, move to the family, or move to the family. So, looking at this problem, what's the parent of this problem? 1 over x. And the 1 over x, if I was going to use a t-chart, I may use something like negative 2, 1, negative 1, and 2. I'll put them in a little different order than I did last time, but if you notice, those are the exact same points that I had last time. I also am going to talk about my asymptotes. That's something that we have to take in consideration because they're not going to go away. So, not only am I going to test points, I also have to say y equals 0 and x equals 0 are my vertical and horizontal asymptotes, or vice versa there. Horizontal asymptote, then my vertical asymptote. Fill it in. When I put in negative 2, I get Negative one half, negative one, one and one half. We just did that in the last slide. So that's repairing. That's pretty much everything that we just did on the last page in a nice, neat column. That's my parent. What letter comes back to get to the family? Two. That's a, that's a number. What letter? The A, right? So it would be y equals 2 over x. And what is the 2 going to do? Vertical stretch of 2. Do I need to say anything about being reflected? No, because it's positive, it's not negative. If it's not going to be anything done, don't say anything about it. If you have nothing nice to say, don't say anything at all, right? So, what do I do with the A? Multiply all of the all the Y's by 2. So negative 2, negative 1, 1, 2 all stay the same, but negative 1 half becomes Negative 1. Half times 2. 1. So it's negative. Negative 1 times 2. Negative 2. 2 and 1. It says multiply all the y's by 2. 0 times 2 is still 0. Notice that 0 would still make y equals 2 over x still be a not work still vertical asymptote and x equals or x equals 0 sorry um, and then the y asymptote is still because the bottom is bigger than the top now we need to get to the child is this an h value or a k value is this with x or not with x it's with x, so therefore it is a h value. 
So y equals 2 over x minus 3. It's inside, right? So if it's an h value and it's x minus 3, you're actually going where? 3 right. We're going 3 right, so we're going to take all of the what and do what? No, we're not going to minus 3 from the y's. We're going to take the, all the x's and add 3. Start at negative 2, you end up at? Start at negative 1. Start at 1. Start at 2. And all of the y's are going to stay the same for their perspective spots. Y. If I take a y equals 0, which is a horizontal line, and move it 3 to the right, is it any different? No. So it's still y equals 0. But if I take an x equals 0, a vertical line, and shift it 3 to the right, it now is x equals 3, because I can add 3 to my x's. I'm going to add 3 to all of my x's, right? So when right down the line, here's the O's and X. X equals 0, now X equals 3. Now I just have to graph this. Looks like I have to go more to the right, obviously. I shifted it that way. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, 1, negative 1. 2, negative 2, we have x equals 3, and y equals 0, that's your vertical and horizontal asymptotes. We have 4, 2, and 5, 1. Same situation as last time. So they're going to approach, but they will not cross your asymptotes. Now we'll talk about s of x. What's 3x plus 5 divided by x plus 2? What if it asks you to do this? It wants you to graph this. Well, we can use the same setup as in I can still write it in that parent family child form, but you will have to do long division first. The reason we need to do this is therefore you can find what's there and what's not there. You can find your, um, your quotient, any remainders, stuff like that. So, set it up. Do I need any placeholders? No. What makes an x a 3x? 3, so I put it over the constants. 3 times x? 3 times 2? And what am I going to do? I'm going to subtract. Don't forget, 3x minus 3x disappear. We engineered that to happen. And 5 minus a 6? Negative 1. Now, can I make an x equal to negative 1? Not without having a rational equation or a rational function or expression, right? So we're done. The remainder is what? So this actually turns out to be 3 plus what? Negative 1 over x plus 2. So we divided it using long division here. You notice that this is now 
like our parent family child form of a rational function, just out of order. And so, if I was going to put this in order, I would have negative 1 over x plus 2. We'll call this with s of x plus 3. Okay. I'm going to save us the time going through this. We're just going to write the words on what your transformations would be. What would the transformations on this one be? Reflected about what? Because there's obviously, we have to now have to worry about x and y's. So this one would be reflected about the x-axis first if I'm just taking consideration that it's a negative 1 on top for a, right? Now, wait a minute. It's a negative 1. Is there a vertical stretch or a shrink going on? Multiply something by 1. Does it change? No. So there is no stretch or shrink going on. It's just reflecting about the x-axis. We also then can say that it's 2 to the left and 3 up. So those will be the words on your bridge, but you should recognize that the corners, now remember, if I'm, I'm going to go back real quick on this last graph, that it's opposite corners here. If it's reflected, that means this top corner that was on the top right is now on the bottom right. Bottom left is now top left. So when you go to graph that, see that happen. Use Desmos, show that it's also moved to the left and up. So without even having to graph this, guys, we should see potentially something over here, right? The corners have switched places, and it's to the left and up, OK? That's not the graph. I'm just saying we can all recognize that it should be over there someplace. It should be in, definitely in the second quadrant the main part of it. Any questions? So let's talk about all the rest of them. Now, the last problem that we did, or even the first problem we did, we did not have to use the parent family child. Okay? Parent family child doesn't always work. So there's some other things that we're going to use here is the fact that we're going to be able to graph any rational function. Any polynomial divided by another polynomial. Okay. I've got seven things up here. Each one of these could potentially have their own little sub-steps. But I want you guys, when you guys get a rational function, I want you to factor the top and the bottom. The numerator and the denominator. I then want you to use that factorization to find your x-intercepts, your y-intercepts, all of these th different things. And so, how do I find the x-intercepts? Well, it's what makes the problem equal 0. On a fraction, the only thing that really matters to make it 0 is when the top equals 0. And so that's why I put the words in there, that if I'm finding my x-intercepts, set the top equal to 0 and solve. I want you to find your y-intercept. Your y-intercept is plug 0 into the whole entire problem, solve for y. So it would be 0, comma, some number. It's slightly different because it could be a quadratic over a quadratic. It could be a fraction. It could be a decimal. It could be something that's not so nice. I then want you to find your vertical asymptotes. So basically, every single one of these steps is like a list of things. Okay. And so now you have to find your vertical asymptote. means every time that factorization of the bottom, all of those factors, you set them equal to 0, using the 0 product rule, and therefore each one of those becomes a vertical asymptote, which means it's a vertical line on your graphs. The graph will never touch or cross there. Now, I already hinted at the fact that most of your graphs, or at least in that first part, there's always y equals 0 for a horizontal asymptote. Why is that true? It's because if n 
is less than m. Wait, where are those? What is m and n? m and n. I'll put it off to the side here. m and n are the degree. Degrees of. Sorry, let me reverse that order. Say n first. n and m are the degrees of the polynomials. So n is the degree of the polynomial of the top. The bottom is the degree uh, has a degree of m. So you might have to you'll have to say something like this. If you need to put a little picture next to that so you can visualize that. If the top degree is less than the bottom degree, that's case 1, you like it. You like this because it's just going to be y equals 0. Our 1 over x. x is a bigger degree than 1. That means we always had a y equals 0 horizontal um, asymptote. Now, if they happen to be the same degree, as in they're both degree 2, they're both quadratics, or they're both lines, well then, you have to worry about the coefficients. And so now your horizontal asymptote is y equals the a sub n over a sub m, the coefficients that were on your degree. I noticed those that I should not have done that. I should have put x, not n, or a. Sorry. Can't. x to the n over x to the m. X's have your degrees, right? A sub n and A sub m are the coefficients. I just kind of mashed them together there. Um, so if the degrees are the same, you just take the coefficients that are in front, the leading term, okay? And therefore you have your horizontal asymptote. Case three. Case three is going to be what happens if the top is bigger than the bottom? Guys, we just did a problem very similar to that on the last problem, even though they were the same. Um, we just, it's, it's not a horizontal asymptote anymore. They're going to call it a slant asymptote, which means it could be a line, but the line has got a slope to it. So it's curved, or it's, it's slanted. It's running sideways or up and down, doing something different. It could even be a quadratic. It could be a cubic. It's something other than a straight horizontal line. You need to use long division. And the asymptote is the quotient, the, the larger solution to that long division. We're going to do examples of all three of these. Obviously, not going to have time today. Six, I want you then to plot all of that information. Your x-intercepts, your y-intercepts, your asymptotes, your uh, vertical, horizontal. And then I want you to make a table and graph. And we're going to get into those steps of making the tables and graphs. To make tables, guys, every time I have a vertical asymptote, it will split my graph into a new table. So if there's one vertical asymptote, and so if I had a graph like this, and put a vertical asymptote in there, I should recognize that there is part of the graphs over here. And then part of the graph is over here. So it splits the graph into two zones. So I'll have two teachers. If by chance there happens to be a second vertical asymptote, I will have three T-charts. One for the far left, one for the middle, and one for the far right. Okay? There's always one more T-chart than you have of vertical asymptotes. And I actually place those t-charts in each zone so I don't mess up. It's very easy to mess up when you start to do things like making one large table. Your homework is on page 321, 1 through 21, every 4. Have a great day.